foramina we are going to see in the cranial fossa, right? The anterior cranial fossa, this is the anterior cranial fossa, the anterior most and posterior most. This is the middle cranial fossa, which has many, many important foramina. And this is the posterior cranial fossa, which is very deep, okay? Yeah. Now, in the anterior cranial fossa, what you see here is the ethmoid bone, right? Which part of the ethmoid bone you see here? All those small, small openings. That's the cribriform plate of ethmoid, right? Cribriform plate of ethmoid. You see any foramen in the anterior cranial fossa? This cribriform plate of ethmoid is going to transfer the olfactory rootlet of the first cranial nerve. Yes, once they've asked, foramen cecum. Okay, usually nothing passes through it. The foramen cecum is in the anterior cranial fossa. Right. Now, coming to the middle cranial fossa. What are the bones that you get to see in the middle cranial fossa? Because once they've asked, like the foramen is situated between which two bones, okay? So, you should know the boundaries of that foramina, bones contributing to those boundaries. Yes? So, the yellow color that you see here is the sphenoid, body of the sphenoid, greater wing of the sphenoid. This is the temporal bone, okay? Petrus part, squamous part, the green color is the parietal bone. Okay, so you can identify the bones. Now we'll talk about the foramina. Yeah. So between the body of the sphenoid and the lesser wing of the sphenoid, this is the optic canal. Just now we saw the optic nerve and the ophthalmic artery passes through it. Right. Okay. Now this one here, I'll take a different color. This between the lesser wing and the greater wing, just now we saw, this is the superior orbital fissure, right? Now coming to the three important foramina that you see here, I'll mark it with three purple color. One, two, and three. What are they? Yes, the anterior most one. This one is the foramen rotundum. Yes. Behind that oval in shape is the foramen oval. Behind that is the foramen spinosum. Now, what is going to pass through this foramen rotundum? Yes, you can tell me. Foramen rotundum, the structure traversing is the maxillary nerve. So, where is this maxillary nerve going into? From the middle cranial fossa. Where does it enter? It's going to leave the cranial cavity and enter the pterygopalatine fossa, right? It's going to enter the pterygopalatine fossa, maxillary nerve, through the foramen rotundum, right? Coming to the foramen oval that you see here, yes, there's a mnemonic, right, for foramen oval? M-A-L-E. What is it? So, the mandibular nerve, accessory meningeal artery, the lesser petrosal nerve, and the emissary vein. Now you're going to tell me the mandibular nerve, right? From back to where it's going, from the middle cranial fossa, it's going to enter the infratemporal fossa, right? So from the foramen oval, it's going to enter the infratemporal fossa. Very good, Dr. Vicha. Accessory meningeal artery, it's a branch of Maxillary artery, the first part of maxillary artery. Lesser petrosal nerve, to which ganglion is it going? Any idea? Lesser petrosal nerve is reaching the infratemporal fossa. What's the ganglion there? Very good. Ortic ganglia. Which parotid gland is it related? I'm sorry, I told you the answer, right? Which salivary gland is related to? To the parotid gland, right? Yes, very good. Now coming to, yeah, the other foramina here behind the foramen away, that's the foramen spinosum. What are the two structures traversing it? Nervous spinosum, that's a branch from which part of the mandibular nerve? Sorry, Dr. Kaushiki. The, what nerve? Nervous spinosum, right? Very good, very good, doctor. The nervous spinosum is a branch coming from the trunk of the mandibular nerve. What is the other structure accompanying it? Middle 
meningeal artery middle meningeal artery is again a branch of first part of maxillary artery right any doubt in this so the middle cranial fossa the foramina very 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 important okay foramen rotundum i told you maxillary nerve entering the pterygo palatine fossa foramen oval mandibular nerve entering the infra temporal fossa and foramen spinosum nerve spinosum from the trunk of the mandibular nerve done and if you want to add here what you see here is the foramen lazarum either side of the body of the sphenoid here you see the upper opening of the carotid canal there's a better picture in the base of the skull i'll be showing you okay need not worry about it right coming to the foramen in the posterior cranial fossa one two and this one foramen magnum okay so what is this internal acoustic meatus so what are the structures traversing the internal acoustic meatus right yeah the seventh nerve eighth nerve and an artery the labyrinthine artery where is this artery coming from yes this labyrinthine artery is a branch of basilar artery which lies over the pons okay so these are the three things which are going to traverse the internal acoustic meatus now as i told you very very important one this foramen here what is it called jugular the jugular foramen right yes the jugular foramen again it's going to be divided into three compartments anterior compartment intermediate compartment posterior compartment okay in the anterior and the posterior compartment there is the venous sinus right what is the venous sinus in the anterior compartment inferior petrosal sinus and in the posterior compartment this one is the ijv the internal jugular vein which is a continuation of the sigmoid sinus and interestingly this inferior petrosal sinus is the first tributary okay as soon as it comes out of the skull it opens into the internal jugular vein first tributary of internal jugular vein now what is there in the intermediate compartment three cranial nerves what are they 9 10 and 11 okay so jugular foramen is located between which two bones between the petrous part of the temporal bone and the occiput bone anterior and posterior compartment a sinus venous sinus anterior compartment inferior petrosal sinus posterior compartment sigmoid sinus is continuing as internal jugular vein intermediate compartment 9 10 11 what happens in the clinical aspect if you see here a fracture to the base of the skull okay which involves the jugular foramen 9 10 11 11 cranial nerves can be involved right and you know there's a name given to the syndrome any idea very good dr arpita and everyone yes those who don't know please note it down it's the burnet syndrome right burnet okay doctor burnet any doubt in this we'll move on now i want you to tell me which foramen like the foramen rotundum oval and spinosum which one you don't get to see in the base of the skull yes of the three yes very good okay the foramen rotundum it doesn't open below it opens anteriorly into the pterygo palatine fossa you can make out the foramen oval you can make out the foramen spinosum rotundum doesn't open below okay understood okay now uh, same thing you can see here mm, can you tell me what is this here that is the lower opening of the carotid canal okay who is going to tell me what is this foramen that you see here this is the styloid process this is the mastoid process so the foramen between the two what is it yes the stylo mastoid foramen what does it transmit 
the seventh nerve isn't it the facial nerve it transmits the facial nerve very good very good very good where is our jugular foramen now yeah can you see here this is the occiput and that's the temporal so this is the area of the jugular foramen okay now the styloid process any idea how long is the styloid process normally it's about 2.5 cm sometimes the styloid process can be very long lengthy right it can be like 5 to yeah about 5 cm or something yes and then it can compress uh, it can yeah compress the ninth nerve producing pain over the ear pain in the throat all that yeah and that goes by the name very good very good guys superb eagle syndrome okay very good very good dr anjima yeah now few things that i would like to see here yeah can you tell me what is this here that the incisive canal yeah the lateral incisive foramen what is it going to transmit yes from so you have the greater palatine vessel that's going to enter in right yeah greater palatine vessel and from the nasal cavity one which is going to greater palatine is going to enter the nasal cavity the one which is going to leave the nasal cavity and come to the palatine is the palate is the sphenopalatine nerve and vessels okay yeah so these are the two structures that are traversing the yeah and you can make out the greater palatine foramen here this is the greater palatine foramen transmitting the vessels you can make out the lesser palatine here two small foramina lesser palatine foramina now other few important one i would like to tell here as i told you here you can make out an empty space yeah that's the foramen lacerum In the anterior aspect of the foramen lacerum you get to see one foramen what is it this one here yeah the anterior end of the foramen lacerum is related to yes the pterygoid canal pterygoid canal which is also called median yeah median canal what is going to pass through it the nerve of the pterygoid canal right the artery of the pterygoid canal is going to pass through it another two small foramina here you know this is the omer right between the omer and the here uh, vaginal process of the omer and this the this one here this is the omero vaginal canal luckily nothing passes through it okay no significant structures are going to pass through it you need not worry and just behind that here this one here this is the palatino vaginal canal vaginal is part of the omer okay vaginal process of the omer palatino vaginal canal what is going to pass through the palatino vaginal canal yes the pharyngeal vessels and nerve okay base of the skull i would like to repeat it again the take home message foramen rotundum of the middle cranial fossa the lower opening is not seen in the base of the skull okay and you have seen the stylomastoid foramen between the styloid process and mastoid process through which the facial nerve is going to exit the syndrome related to styloid process is eagle syndrome you have seen the jugular foramen lower opening of carotid canal here i have tried to show you structures passing through the incisive canal greater palatine lesser palatine foramen and then we saw three small foramina okay anterior you see the foramen lacerum anterior end of the foramen lacerum pterygoid canal and between the omer and the medial pterygoid plate more in the front, uh, you get to see the omer or vaginal canal more proximal to it palatino vaginal canal these have been asked over the previous years no problem in identification the name of the canal or foramen has been mentioned and structures passing through you should be able to tell okay lastly about the foramen foramen magnum right now who's going to tell me what is the point in the anterior margin of the foramen magnum called in the midline one craniometric point 
this this is the anterior margin of foramen magnum right the midpoint of it is called the basion okay just remember just since we are talking about foramen magnum i thought i'll mention it here structures passing through foramen magnum three membranes anteriorly right what are they epical ligament of dense upper band of cruciate ligament and one more what is it membrana tectoria okay other than that what are the structures that are going to pass through it you have the medulla the medulla is going to be covered by the three meninges right with the two spaces subarachnoid space subdural space yes and what are the arteries that are going to pass through it anterior spinal artery posterior spinal artery which are branches from the yes vertebral artery the fourth part of vertebral artery passes through it okay and i'll take another color yes what are the nerves passing through it very good so the plexus the sympathetic plexus around the vertebral artery and the spinal part of the accessory nerve one more one more structure yes the tonsil of the cerebellum okay so it's very very important just go through it the three ligaments the medulla surrounded by the meninges fourth part of vertebral artery along with the anterior spinal artery posterior spinal artery sympathetic plexus around the vertebral artery spinal part of accessory nerve the tonsils of cerebellum